produce a new series of Fit to Stitch. What I realize is how many of you put great trust in the project that we're doing. You're, you're supportive, you buy patterns before you even know what they are, you're very supportive of us, and hopefully our goal is to always please you 10 times over what you anticipated. Our newest series, Series 900, is what we're going to do a little push for. We've kind of been doing a soft push, but now we're going to really step it up a little bit. Our goal is to sell 100 of these over the weekend. So I thought it's difficult sometimes to tell you how great the series is. I honestly think this is our best series yet. The amount of energy and time and, and money and everything that went into this series and the interviews that we obtained and the, the talent that we had on the show is just off the charts. So it's difficult to promote sometimes it because according to rules, we're not allowed to release issues. We're not allowed to, um, you know, show clips. We're, we're not allowed to reveal anything really to you except the titles. So in thinking through this process and what could I do, our last show, this is, the name of the series is Designers and Their Contributions to the Fashion Industry. And there's lots of great things we've done, but one of the things we did in the last show, I obviously couldn't do a series without touching on Chanel jackets. And so the I, I will tell you, and it's probably off the record, how much the Chanel boutique here in Dallas helped us. They can't be on the show. Chanel could not, you know, agree to being on the show. Their standards of quality are just too controlled for them to say, yeah, let's do a show. So we understood that. They understood the situation of what we wanted to do. We wanted to tell the real Chanel story, and they really helped a lot. So um, what I wanted to do here today, because there's things I can do on YouTube that I can't do on PBS, is I really wanted to kind of touch on the insertion of trim on the Chanel jacket and, and how it's done. We do have Chanel fabrics that are, and I wanted to mention again, while you cannot buy Chanel fabric from Chanel. Chanel does not sell remnant fabrics. They'll burn them before they sell them. And that's simply to control their quality. There's been much debate about burning, Burberry burns, um, Chanel burns, but that's how they control their product. It's their product. Is it their right to burn? You know, that's debatable all day long. But you can buy from the mill who sells to Chanel. And my connection will um, simply say, I want fabrics that have been sold to Chanel, and they'll, he'll go through and let her know the fabrics that they purchased. And so we know the jacket I have on, um, this particular fabric we've seen in the Chanel jackets, and so there's some you can trace and say, hey, there it is. So with this, um, the goal today is to highlight that Chanel jacket. I can't repeat any of the information that was on there, but you think about it, if this is $50, and a Chanel jacket is roughly five to eight thousand dollars. If you make one jacket, you save yourself a whole lot of money. So that's the way I looked at it. And I hope you look at that too. Our push is to sell a hundred of these DVDs this weekend. Um, and you know every bit of it goes to fit to stitch. Every bit of it. And the host has no salary, just an FYI. The pattern I'm using today is Max's jacket number 1950. I chose the jacket because it has a very um, soft insert all the way around the neck edge, very soft trim. The jacket I have on is 1900. So you can see that when it's a, a check, you want to use a masculine pattern, and when it's not, you can go into one of your softer patterns. And so I purposely ch chose a tweed that was a soft tweed that didn't have a real linear approach so that I could go into 1950. So the first thing I want to do, and I, I've done this whole thing through photos so that you could really see um, up close what was done in each of these steps. I have had the complaint that while you love the sewing, sometimes you can't see because we don't stop and take those pictures, which we'll work on that also. But in the first case, what I wanted you to see is the fabric. And the fabric that I'm using is really just a beautiful tweed. It's a, it's a cotton. There's a little Lurex thread in there, and that Lurex thread is not a cotton. It's a poly, and it, it melts. So when you burn it, you'll get a melt, but the melt is simply the Lurex thread. It's not the fiber itself. Um, I wanted you to see the selvage. So the very first picture here is the selvage. And what I want you to notice on this particular um, selvage is that the two uh, selvages are not the same. This is often in fabrics. 
Um, so you can see the difference in those two selvages there, and then you just choose simply the one you like. I chose the one that's kind of hairier, <laughs> if you can call it, bushier, whatever you want to call it. But I also wanted to show you some options, because whenever you have um, a tweed, which is what your Chanel jackets are done, you can always undo a selvage. So this next picture is going to show you how I undid the selvage. However, the warp selvage will give you a different picture than the weft selvage. And so what you want to do is undo both of them and decide which one you like better. So in the particular case of the jacket I have on, because I wanted a really, uh, Chanel is famous for their kind of fringe that they do, you can undo a little of both of them and decide which selvage you like better and then decide on the whole jacket. There's nothing worse than making it up and then saying, oh, I don't even like that. All right, so once you decide on the trim, as you can see, um, the options that you have, you're going to reduce it to 3 8 inches wide. And if it's not 3 8 it won't turn the corners well. 5 8 will bulk up and give you um, resistance when you go to turn. So you want to be sure that you trim that to 3 8 The next picture we're showing you is that because your trim is along the edge, in many cases, you don't have to have one continuous piece. What you can see is you can trim that, you can seam that selvage I'm sorry, the, the um, trim, just like you seam the center back seam. So at the back, the center back of this, where there, it's a shawl collar and there is a seam, I went ahead and seamed the selvage as well so that you can see that those seams match and align. In fact, they match so well it's hard to even see where they go together. But those seams can align. And then you have enough all the way down the front and you have enough all the way. You don't need one continuous piece all the way. And this is true no matter what type of piping or inserting you're using. So then the first step then is to take the trim, as you can see here, and sew it all the way around on one side. And the trim that you want is, is on the inside of the jacket. So this has been trimmed to 3 8 and you can see there I'm going to turn it. The next step that you see is you're going to um, put, because you've got a stitching on here, and I stitched this in a, in a beige, really so that when you put now the two together, you're going to stitch from the top this side and you're going to stitch on the exact same line you've already stitched on. You can see exactly where you've stitched the selvage onto. And so you have no worries. It's a very easy thing to do. And then you can see the next picture. Um, you're going to turn it. And you're going to give it a little bit of press. And the next picture you can see is turned. And I've just taken a picture of what it looks like. On this particular jacket, I wanted to show you some other changes that I made. And so there's a series of pictures that I'm going to show you because I've gotten questions about how you do the following. So the very next picture is I'm going to narrow the shoulder. And if you look at this picture, you want to notice that you're actually not even touching the side panel. You're actually going to this front piece and you're narrowing it right in here. And when you're narrowing it from the shoulder point and tapering it to the bust, to, to nothing at the bust, it's like a dart, you're just bringing the whole shoulder in, but you're not touching the armhole, you're not touching any of that, and that's really the easiest way to do it. So when you have a princess seam, take advantage of that princess seam, and that's where you want to narrow the shoulder. The next one I'm showing you is I'm going to use a half inch shoulder pad on this rather than the one inch shoulder pad that was given in the directions. And so you can see that what I'm doing is I'm overlapping um, piece number one and two, the, the overlap that 3 8 inch seam allowance, and then just cut the diagonal. And you can see that the widest point of this is the one half inch. And you want to do that in the front as well as the back. And then coordinating to that, the next picture is showing I'm reducing the cap height by one half inch also. Not the undersleeve. You don't have to change the undersleeve, but the widest point is a half an inch. And then you start at one side at half inch at the top and taper to nothing again to the other side. So these photos will really help you see the changes I made to this jacket. You'll see it when it's all done because I'm going to wear it on the show. And you can see the process and the steps that I went through. The last picture I want to show you is when you are adding trim to a sleeve, you're going to add two seam allowances to the bottom of that sleeve. And what that's going to do is give you a chance to literally, as you're making the jacket, you don't have to do this ahead of time, but just as you fold it up, you're going to cut that. It, it'll be longer because you've added the three-fourths of an inch. You've added two seam allowances. You're going to cut that. You're going to insert the trim, whatever trim you want to make. And you can see this is kind of fun and fuzzy. And I, I love this jacket because as I wear it, 
It kind of feels like it, it, I don't know, I just love it. I just love the fringe on this jacket. But anyway, you're gonna cut it right at the bend of the seam. You're going to insert the, the trim that you've decided on, and then you're gonna sew it all the way around. And that will take up two seam allowances, which is your three fourths of an inch, and that's the amount you're adding. And you're gonna add that both on the upper sleeve and the under sleeve. So you can see in preparation, I'm going to add the trim at the bottom of the sleeve on this jacket. And so I've prepared to do that. So keep in mind that when I'm adding or inserting trim or piping or anything you're doing on any jacket, these are the steps you're going to go through. Very easy to do and really a lot of fun. So our goal is to really help you get that Chanel look that we love and want. Again, the show has many more details that um, we went in through the we went into the what's called the bluff pocket. I don't know it's, it, if you even know what that is, but we showed a bluff pocket. We showed how to do it. We showed inside the jacket. We showed the weights as far as the chains and what they used as far as other weights go. Um, we showed fusibles and how they did it. We took several Chanel jackets and turned them inside out and really had a lot of fun. So here's to happy sewing. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.